Hello, Scrabble here, and this time I'm coming at you with impressions on Detective Gallo. Detective Gallo is a noir detective adventure game in the styling of classic LucasArts and Sierra adventure games done by Mixed Bag Games. Now you should know Mixed Bag Games did provide me with a code for this game so that I could conduct this review, and I thank them for that. Before I get started, I just I want to talk about adventure games. I love adventure games. As a kid, I grew up playing King's Quest and Police Quest and Sierra's uh, other quest games, Quest for Glory, Leisure Suit Larry. I'm sure I'm not alone in these. I remember that once upon a time, I rented a game called Return to Zork. And I know that game wasn't very much beloved, being as it was an FMV adventure game but I loved it at the time, and it led me to go back and take a look at classic Infocom games like Zork and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I played through all of them, and it instilled in me a love of these adventure games. In fact, even to this day, I continue to play text adventures, despite the fact that they're now called interactive fiction, and I love them really so much. In fact, the first game that I purchased with my own money was Sierra's King's Quest collection, which was a collection of the very first seven games in King's Quest. There was an eighth game. I have not played it, and it didn't really look like it appealed to me all that much. But those first seven games, I played through them back to back, and I loved every minute of it. They combined story and comedy and puzzles in a way that just grabbed me and pulled me in. So seeing Detective Gallo kind of scratched an itch that I didn't know that I had for these classic adventure games. Part of that love is that it feels like it's a battle of wits between the player and the game designer. Can the game designer come up with a scenario that you can't think your way out of? As a player, do you have the intelligence needed to surpass and overcome his design? It's a two, like a one-on-one -on -one conversation that you don't experience or I don't experience all that often in games where a lot of times AAA titles are a conglomeration of ideas that can be a lot of fun to play through but just don't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. So more on Detective Gallo. This is a port from Steam and on Steam and, and PC, it's a mouse driven game, just as in the style of the classic games. You move your mouse, you click on somewhere, your detective moves to the location that you click. You use the mouse to interact with various objects and to grab your inventory. Works great on PC. Not so much in docked mode on the Switch where I did most of my playing, where the analog stick controls an on-screen cursor, you move it around to select various things, hit a button to interact, move it to uh, move your character. And on the main menu, it was especially a problem where I couldn't figure out exactly where the points on the screen to interact were. I would have much preferred just a text menu that I hit up and down through, but the initial menu to start the game wasn't that. That's fine, uh, but I would have preferred a controller input. Now, on the other hand, this input works fantastically in portable mode, where the developer has implemented touch controls that also work in the same style as the mouse. And on the touch screen, this is beautiful, and I'd love to see more adventure games doing this. You should know that the game runs well. The music, the voice acting are wonderful. The story is uh, comedic and quite nice. But to me, more importantly in an adventure game are those puzzles. It is that conversation with the designer. And the puzzles really harken back two classic adventure games. At times, it's too much. They really hit things that I don't appreciate in adventure games. 
For example, earlier on in the game, there's a section where a shell casing that you need to collect rolls under a couch. Now, you have a golf club and you have an electric plant trimmer. And the golf club, you're like, oh, that's perfect. It's got a hook on the end. I'm going to stick it out of the couch. I'm going to pull it out. And Detective Gallo says, I would much rather use a golf club the way the golf clubs were intended to be used. Meaning he was refusing to use it to grab that shell casing out. So I tried with the uh, electric plant trimmer or hedge trimmer. I think it says it's a plant trimmer. And he used that just fine to get the shell casing out. And I thought, if I had these items, I would much rather use the golf club. And I was not happy that the game did not allow me this obvious alternate solution. And I think some players might run into this as a problem that they have with the game where they might think of another solution that the developer hasn't implemented. Along those same lines, some of the trappings of the puzzles of the game can be a little bit crazy. Still early on in the game, you need to make a paintbrush. It'd be much easier to buy a paintbrush, but you need to make a paintbrush. And this involves you taking that same hedge trimmer and putting a toupee on it. While this has comedic value, that's not a paintbrush. So it might be hard for a player to think, how do I do this? How do I take the toupee? Like, how do I make a paintbrush? I've got all these things. None of these things combine to be a paintbrush. So it's an interesting problem to think around, but it can be really obtuse. There is a help system in the game that you that provides you with some tips. Now, I didn't find that the help system goes into a lot of detail so it wouldn't say okay do this if you want to hint like if you look at a game like thimbleweed park thimbleweed park has a progressive help system where you can take a look at any problem and say okay here's a very high level hint and then tell the game you know that that didn't help me very much and get another hint now, that didn't help me enough get another hint until eventually it just gives you the answer this is a style of hint system that was called Invisiclues back in the text adventure days where you had a book written in invisible ink and a lemon juice based pen and you could highlight the hints as you were going. And I would have much preferred that style of hints instead of what's there, what's there is just along the lines of you're going to have to send some mail and you're going to need to use the phone. And that's really high level for what needs to be done. I mean, in this particular chapter of the game, you need to send some mail. And the steps along sending some mail are crazy. You need a photo, and to get the photo, there's a girl with the photo, and to, for her to give it to you, you need to paint a mural next to her, and to paint a mural next to her, you have to rob a vending machine to satisfy a kid who's going to do the painting, then you have to make the paintbrush, then you got to dip the paintbrush in the paint, then you got to give the kid the paintbrush, then he goes and does it, then she's still not happy with that, so you have to go, and you got to find some other paint, and then you have to paint the mural, and then you get the photo, then you need to find the envelope. You can put the photo in the envelope. Then you still can't send the envelope because you need to seal the envelope. You couldn't just lick the envelope closed. So you have to use a candle and you got to melt the candle and you got to get the sealing wax to seal up the envelope so that you can mail the envelope. And it's crazy. But that is the styling of the classic adventure games. That's that's what they did. They were not always super logical. And to that point, this game has done a great job of being faithful and staying on track with what's clearly the inspiration for the game. So it definitely scratched an itch for me. I believe the game is a great experience despite the problems that I'm listing. If you like adventure games and if you liked those classic LucasArts games, those Sierra games, you're going to have a great time with Detective Gallo. I meant to play and do a quick look video like I normally do for 30 minutes or so, and I ended up playing an hour without really realizing it and saying, you know, this video is going to be way too long with an hour of footage, so I'm really going to have to figure something out to do which is why i decided to do this so 
overall, I do think the game is worth the money. It's $15 US on the eShop. You can pre-order it right now for 10% off. And it is available on the 17th, which is uh, just a couple days away. So thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this impression video, please hit the like button. If you would like to hear more impressions, see quick looks, other stuff that I'm doing, feel free to subscribe. You can share a comment on the video. I love to talk to the commenters. Thank you again. Take care. And I will see you next time. Hello, Scrabble here.